Woohoo! I should have done a robot dance. <laughs> and we're live once again on another Tuesday. And I have an awesome special person in the house today, Kevin D. Turner, who is here to talk about great stuff. So Kevin, take it away. Well, soft, but soft. What light through yonder desktop break? It is LinkedIn Live. And Jillian, our host, welcome to this week's Algo Peace Theater. Today's subject is to bot or not to bot. That is the question. Whether it is nobler to create content or to suffer the dings and narrows of outrageous algorithms on LinkedIn or to take up arms against the sea of AI, that's what we'll talk about today. And Jillian, thank you for having me. Probably the last time you'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! I love it. I love it. And and I'm thinking of taking up arms is like pens. <laughs> it's like, you know, like the pen is mightier than the sword. So it's kind of like it how do, how do you battle a bot? Right? It's like you take up a pen and a piece of paper and you do this thing called writing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's it's going to soon be a lost art. People are like, what? I, I, I just typed. So, you know, so taking up arms, bends, bends. Okay, so um, this is an amazing conversation today. And I'm going to fling up our banner, as I love to do, to bot or not to bot. That is the question. And of course, when we're talking about bots, we're talking about robots, we're talking about AI, which is artificial intelligence for anybody who doesn't know what AI is. And AI is literally taking the world by storm. It's taking the internet by storm and it's taking LinkedIn by storm. There is so much AI coming to LinkedIn. But what's interesting, Kevin, this is not new. Like there yeah. are new features, but can you just kind of give us a little bit of the backstory about AI is is already, you know, LinkedIn calls it oxygen. So mm -hmm. what's sort of the backstory of AI before we get into where we are today? Well, it, the first one we always think about is feed algorithm, right? Mm -hmm. How do we get what comes into our feed? That's AI. AI is deciding based on our activities, based on what LinkedIn wants to present, uh, and a couple other factors. They are creating a math equation, AI, that's delivering our feed for us not always been great, right? Sometimes we argue it's really, really bad. <laughs> you know, we've got some workarounds with like the, the creative content uh, uh, filters, right? So we've worked our ways around, but that's, you know, the, I guess the most obvious AI. But LinkedIn has been doing AI since 2005. If you think about your profiles, your profiles have to be scored and ranked. That's all done by an algorithm, which is AI, in that sense, much like Google rank sites, nobody gets eliminated, but you go down the rank. If you're not on page one or two, nobody finds you, right? LinkedIn's the same way. So that's kind of where the AI began very simple forms, right? It was so easy to game LinkedIn at the very beginning. You could actually, if you wanted to be LinkedIn expert, all you had to do is paste LinkedIn expert all over your profile to the point mm -hmm. where people couldn't even read it but you would come up as the number one LinkedIn expert. And as long as nobody looked at your profile, you might get them calling you and saying, would you be my LinkedIn expert, right? That's how silly it was, but they've gotten better. And now that basically the owners of LinkedIn have invested so much into chat GTP, one of the, the I guess the more famous generative AIs, right? They own 49% of that company. I can't remember how many billions they dropped in there. They also own LinkedIn. So that's why we're seeing more of these features coming in. And, you know, today we're being a little bit silly, but we need to be because you can't always take everything seriously, right? And there's a lot of people who are afraid right now of AI and they're like, oh, it's going to take my job. It's going to destroy everything. It's going to overpower the feed. It's going to, and there are some good and some bad things that it will do, but we shouldn't be scared of it, right? Embrace it, play with it, see what it does. And what we want to accomplish today is talk a little bit about some of those features that are coming out using AI, but then also how do you use AI yourself if you want to, and what 
potentially are the downfalls in that process. And I promise from here on out, I will uh, keep my thespian tendencies in control and <laughs> we'll, we'll get to the good stuff. <laughs> I love it. And, and this is kind of, this is why I like lives because lives are like real. Like you are not the bot. You are not here. You're not the fake Kevin. You're the real Kevin that's here where anything can happen. Anything can go wrong. This is kind of like, to me, it's like the last chance balloon before you like head off into the world of AI on LinkedIn. And um, one of the first things I'd love to talk about is the collaborative articles, because that is something that I have already participated in. Um, I'm amazed at the, we, we laughed about it before, but I'm amazed at sort of the carrot that LinkedIn is like putting out in front of us of like, everyone is special, you know, and it's like, we all got the email at the beginning that said, you've been chosen. And then of course, everybody started saying, I've been chosen. And it's like, well, wait, so have I, so have I. <laughs> yeah, my Jack Russell got one. He's very active in the dog bone area and they needed more input. He got one. <laughs> you know, interesting me. enough, it was based off our skills, our skill endorsements. So when everybody, everybody says, oh, you know, skill endorsement, pff, nobody needs that. That's silly stuff. That's how they picked us. So mm -hmm. they looked at the categories that they wanted to create content for that the uh, editors were too lazy to start the articles on and invite people in and interview them, right? So they said, well, we'll create AI. We'll drive this. The editors can give us an idea. AI will create the core of the article. And then we'll invite people in who are highly scored in those particular categories. So, mm. you know, that's how they kind of pick that first group. You have to be active on content. You know, you got to be okay. writing, posting, commenting, those kind of things. But then you've got to have a high score in that category that they invite you in. Now, artificial intelligence is just that. It's artificial and it's not really that intelligent. And I know people like Andy Foote, I know um, uh, Beth Granger, they got invited for networking. And the AI thought, okay, I can, I can generate these articles for the editor about networking. The AI thought Wi-Fi. Oh, Connecting got your it. computer to the network, right? Mm. And so they sent out these things like, Andy, talk about networking. <laughs> mm. And how do you do it with the latest XXX uh, Wi-Fi networking tool? Completely wrong right? Mm. That's kind of a sample of how AI can kind of go astray. You really have to feed it the right information and say, not networking in the technology sense, but networking in the human sense of connecting, right? Mm. So you have Clever. to understand what you're asking it because it will, it'll just kind of create its own truth. Right. <laughs> so that's what right. I, yeah. Right. But I, I love what they're doing in the sense of trying to get more people to comment, right? Trying to get them more involved. Um, what I think is interesting is I can tell already the majority of those comments on these AI collaborative articles are generated by AI. Because you uh, can tell, you can read uh, them. And believe it or not, there's some tools out there where you can actually scan them and they'll tell you 85% chance, 90% chance, 50% chance that this was written by AI. Oh, uh, and so you start to think, well, how can they tell? And you think about a robot. Could you give a warm hug to a robot? Would mm. it care, right? Probably not. Does a warm robot have stories about leading a team and how you know it, it made everything really special? Probably not, right? And so it's going to write from its perspective. And that's why I always look at AI if you're going to use it to help you create content like this or to comment on content, realize it doesn't have a soul. It doesn't have your personality, right? Even though you can train it a little bit and you're really going to have to take that content and rework it quite a bit. It can be, I always say that AI can be a muse, right? It can get your creativity juices going. You got a, a thought. It can make you think all sorts of other things. So it can be a muse but it can't be a standalone artist. It doesn't have the ability because it doesn't have those human traits. And so I just found that fascinating that I think majority of the comments are AI generated. And I know people who were commenting 100, 200 times a day 
on oh. these articles just using chat GTP oh. or they're using Bard. <laughs> and is that fair? And did we really want a AI collaborative article with other AI? <laughs> no. The, the concept, if you think about it, what LinkedIn was trying to tell us in its way that it never tells you anything, right? What it was trying to tell us is we understand that the human expert is what's going to add value to these articles because the AI can start it, but it can't add the right value. That takes a human being. Those are the kind of things, if you think about that as a lesson, it means you can use AI. It can be helpful. It can be amused. It can help you assemble things. It might even help you rewrite stuff like Grammarly is an AI, right? It can help you, but it can never replace you. And so people mm -hmm. need to understand that it's not going to go away. It's going to be here. It's going to continue on, learn to work with it and learn to kind of know goods and bads, right? Yep. 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 That, that really disheartens me because I'm one of, I'm one of the people that's sitting there like plugging away my own answer and just because I figure, although I have to ask who's reading these, are, are anybody reading them? Like, I think we're all, we're all have that incentive to do it because number one, we feel special. And then number two, it's like the dangle of, oh, you could earn top voice. And it's just like, oh, wow, that would be cool to have on my profile. And but you had said before, it's not necessarily just about how many you answer, because I've already answered a ton. But the thing is, is that you kind of have to have that upvote thing going on where you people do. have you to. And, and if you don't get that, which means probably nobody's reading. <laughs> and, and it's top voice. So if you think about it, if you're a big fish in a small pond, you're more likely to be top voice. If you're a small fish in a big pond, right, more competition, you're very unlikely to get in there. The first badge I saw actually was Mindy Stern. And she came to me and she said, look, I got a top voice badge. She did a category, I think it was called HR Consulting. And she said, I've only contributed to three articles, three comments, mm -hmm. but I've got a top voice. And I said, you found the perfect way. You're, you're running a race with very few competitors, right? The categories I looked at, and I didn't even think about it. I looked at like leadership. I looked at branding and social media. Those things are, are you know, as soon as the article comes out, there's 10 people on them, right? Mm. So what they're going to do is they're going to look at that. And then they're going to look at uh, down below. You have the little insightful light bulb, right? If somebody clicks that, that's kind of like a multiplier. They're going to count those little light bulbs and then decide in the group within your category, how do you rack up? So we don't know exactly. It may be like the top 10% of a category is the one that's going to get the badge. So if you've got, mm -hmm. you know, 300 people, 30 people will end up getting their top voice badge. So just a lot of it depends on the categories that you tackle. If you really want a badge, find a category that nobody else is commenting on, right? And get after it. That'll get you your badge. If you right. just want to get out there and share your knowledge, then you might look at some of these larger, more influential subjects, but no getting a badge from that's going to be much more difficult. Got it. Got it. Now, now with, with those articles, I never see them except for, hey, comment. I don't see them in my feed to just read to, to, so is it because I'm an author? I don't see the articles. Like, how does that work? Uh, you know, I think it's a little bit of everything in, in the sense of if you're following the skill page, right. Then those articles should come up in your feed. Okay. So if you're commenting on them, but you haven't followed the skill page, they may not come up as other contributing articles. I'm now getting both the ones that they say, hey, you ought to contribute to. And then I'm getting some in my feed that I haven't even looked at. So they're starting to come out. And I think they're starting to figure out how to promote these. I think they want to test the waters a little bit and see, you know, if it was just uh, poop, right? As Shakespeare would say, <laughs> all that glitters isn't gold. <laughs> it wasn't real gold. Maybe they didn't want to push it out there so much. So I think they were taking kind of a, a slower step forward before they really start filling feed with it. And, you know, that's one of my, I guess, pet peeves in some of this process and some of the process of 
people who call themselves content creators, right? And are allowing generative AI to create the content for them. They're not even looking at it, right? They're just throwing it in and saying, ah, I've got a post. I can do five posts a day if I want to, because it only takes me 30 seconds total, right? To create all these posts. They're right. not even looking at what they're posting. That's mm. jamming up our feed. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I guess the question would be, does this count as a post? Like if, if you go to somebody's activity, does that count as a post? Like it's more as you're a competing against your own posts. If you do yeah. this, it's more of a comment. So okay. when you're adding it in there, they're counting it as a comment. The whole thing is the post itself. And that's mm -hmm. a editor post. Just like if you comment into an editor's post. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's good. So, okay. So moving from the, the collaborative articles, some of the other ones are premium features, mm -hmm. right? AI mm -hmm. premium features. And, um, you, you, you know, this better than me, but like they're all with your, so far they're with your profile. Can you explain what some of those are? Absolutely. Well, there's, there's one in particular and it's called enhance, right? Mm -hmm. AI powered enhancement of your profile. And I know they're looking to expand it beyond that. But right now, what it does is it focuses on your headline, right? And it focuses on your about section. Now, okay. what it's going to do in the headline is if you have all your positions, right? Uh, they're already kind of filled in. You've got uh, your education in there. If you have that certificates, all those kind of things, you've basically completed your profile. If you click enhance, what it's going to do is it's going to look at all that content, right? Right. It's going to look for skills and things that you bring to the table that it can see, right? Because it's in the content. And then it's also going to use AI to extrapolate other skills that it doesn't see, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you have a certain title in a certain industry, you also have these kind of skills. And what it's going to do is it's going to present a headline to you that you can then accept. You can also edit it. Or you can say, I want to stick with the one I started with. Again, it's LinkedIn admitting this might not be perfect. We need your input. They won't let it just go live to your profile. You've got to go in and pick those choices, you know, post it, edit it, leave my original alone, right? They know that. So they're already admitting this is going to get you part of the way there. What I think it will help is people who have nothing, right? Yes. I always say AI will make the mediocre average. And sometimes average is good enough, right? What you really want to do is go from average to mediocre, right? You want to have something that grabs and catches and a robot's not going to create something that sparks emotion, right? Something that creates passion out of other people because it doesn't understand that. Mm -hmm. And so that's where you can take that as a muse, that content and, you know, put it maybe into a better effect. What I think it will help do is identify SEO keywords, right? Because it's going to be looking for those, you know, and okay. the main purpose of LinkedIn, if you think about it, is the sale of members to other members. That's 65% of the 75 or 17, pardon me, $17 billion annual revenue. 65% of it is selling members to other members. They want the best package members to promote. And so that's what they're trying to do here. So I would look at that and say the keywords that are in there are ones you want to pay attention to, to maybe drive you forward. Now, that's if you mm -hmm. focused your profile correctly, right? The other component of that, it's also going to write your about section. Now, what it's going to do in the about section, it's going to give you about a five line paragraph. Well, you've got 2,600 spaces. Mm -hmm. Five lines is what, 300 maybe? It's also not going to do something, uh, you know, that it should, and that is create a hook. Because we mm. all know if you see a about section and it goes, uh, I'm a blah, blah, blah at Microsoft, blah, 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 and it sounds like a robot, you're never going to click see more, mm. right? If you start out, mine starts out with, you know, that I've had six pivots in my career on purpose, People click to see more to go, what the heck guy's doing? <laughs> Why would he do that to himself, right? I want the rest of the story. I want exactly. the rest of the story. AI is not going to create that hook. Mm. AI is not going to write it like a person. AI is going to write it like subject neutral, almost like 
a summary paragraph in a resume. Mm. If you think about LinkedIn internally within the code, do you know what LinkedIn calls the profile? No. They call it a resume. Ah. The number one client on LinkedIn, almost, almost 60% of the 65% is talent solution recruiters. And mm. what do they want from us all? Our resumes. So mm. a profile, according to LinkedIn, is a fancy resume. Got a lot more augmentation in there, right? Pictures and, and all sorts of kind of proof stuff that you can put in there. But it is basically a resume. That's how LinkedIn looks at it. That's how you can download your profile in a PDF as a resume. All those things are there. So that, that's how they're looking at it. To me, that's very much like that paragraph is going to be written is like a small summary paragraph in a resume, neutral, no people, you know, no me, no I, no, you know, no excitement, no passion. Um, it's going to be more kind of business neutral. So bland. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was going to. <laughs> it is. It is a form of blending. Anytime you get a bot to write for you, especially about you, right, that's blanding. No, I didn't. I don't know if you saw um, Gus Bagdell's post today. It was really no. clever. He did a screen. He put a prompt for Chat GTP uh, about you know who is the the greatest LinkedIn expert in the UK. And it came back and it said, "Oh, of course, that's uh, Gus Bagdell, and he's <laughs> handsome and he's brilliant and he's <laughs> and it's just great." You read this thing and you're like, you start cracking up because. Chat GTP couldn't do that, but that's what was funny. Gus knew that, oh so he wrote his own, and it is just, it's hilarious. It sounds like I, lo I love the handsome bit. That <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I think it was like, I think it was devilishly, devil, devilishly handsome, right? <laughs> As Shakespeare would say, give the devil his due. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. So what was, what was the thing? Did, did Gus write it himself? Was that like, yeah, just... he just, he just graphically okay. changed it. And he said, look what, look what look what ChatGTP said about me. Right, right. right and so you read right. the top, who's the greatest LinkedIn expert in the UK? And boom. <laughs> it's just, I love it. I just thought I it love was brilliant it. because it really kind of showed an example of what ChatGP couldn't do. Oh my gosh. You know? Oh my gosh. So 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 if you were a newbie coming on LinkedIn and you kind of just didn't know where to start. You, you you said you could start with these tools, right? Like so. especially the enhance, and especially if mm -hmm. you're new and you do the one month free trial of like premium or something, but then just use it as a base and grow from there. Yeah. A dry SEO titled headline is better than sales manager at Microsoft. Got it. <laughs> right? Got it. So in that sense, better than nothing. And there should be some things in there that are actually really good for you. And that's going to be those, I think those keywords, but then you want to bring your personality out in there, make somebody want to read it. Right. Right. Make it exciting. Right. That's where the branding comes in. I love it. I love it. Well, I see we have a bunch of comments and huh. so let, let's zip over to those. So of course we have our buddy in the front row, Jeff Young, two of my favorite LinkedIn superheroes, <laughs> Jillian and Jeff. Great to see you too. Namaste. We always love you. Yeah, thank you. And then we have Albert. Hi from Barcelona. I am hoping all our clocks are back in sync. It's <laughs> looking good so far. Yes, oh, I love like, Barcelona. It's it's so nice. It's so nice that like the time change happened this weekend over across the pond. So everybody's on the same time zone. So yay. So they're all well, hurting they're not on this. We're on the same page. We're not on the same time zone. So that's good to know. <laughs> We've got Tegan here. Hey, hey. Tegan. hey. Again, we've got Mick Adam. Good morning to you both. I love the, the blend of people across the pond and in country. So that's always great. Thank you, Mick. Judy, Kevin, and Jillian. Hello, hello. <laughs> it's so nice to see all these wonderful people. Um, oh, this this is this is great. So we have greetings from Windsor, Ontario, across from Motown, which is of course wow. Detroit, Detroit. And so here's here's evidence of a, uh, a a notification. Jeff, 
talk to them. <laughs> Jeff will get them sorted <laughs> out. So I love that. Hey, hey, uh, Kevin means business on this topic. Well, you do have to mean business on this topic. Don't you agree, Kevin? You have to, like, I, I, I think I'm probably in the camp of feeling a little nervous about the AI. I actually had a chat yesterday with Bard. I'm, I'm checking out Bard mm -hmm. because I'm nervous about who I should who I should sign up with. I looked at ChatGPT and it wanted my phone number. And I went, you know, my phone number is my last thing. I don't That's really want to- all you need is like bot dialing in the middle of the night. Yeah, hey, you know, you it's like I get it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I get enough of the guy who's still trying to sell me solar panels, you know, like I'm tired of those phone calls. And so I went, uh, I don't really want to give up my phone number. So I didn't do it. But Google Bard didn't make it do it. And I figured, well, you know, we were doing Shakespeare. Bard sounded more user friendly to me than a chat GPT. So mm -hmm. I'll give Bard a chance. So I asked Bard yesterday, you know, what's kind of like, should I be nervous about video and the rise of artificial intelligence. And it kind of went through and kind of told me, here's how it can make my life easier. And it tried to assure me that Jillian, don't worry too much. You're not going to be totally replaced. But there is a lot well, of, yeah. there <laughs> is a lot of, I, I could be replaced. I could be replaced because it's like, for anybody that doesn't want to get on camera, you can have a fake avatar with a British accent, you know, and, 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 well, you know what IBM is doing right now? They've got a program now that will take all the videos you've ever done, right? All your lives. They will scan those. They can then reproduce you to the point of your voice, your candor, the type of humor you have. How do you interact? Rolling the eyes when I come on stage. <laughs> all those things. It can duplicate that. You could actually invite guess and they wouldn't know it wasn't you and you could be uh, off eating bonbons right reading books whatever you want to do walking the dog and it would actually host your podcast for you uh, that to me is where things are going really rapidly and i think a lot of times we got to put our brakes on because yeah. a couple things happen in generative ai and that is generative ai doesn't know where to stop because it sees itself as a entity and it looks for its own survival. If you think about how generative AI is created, it is created to win arguments or discussions, mm -hmm. right? It's a chat bot. And so its purpose is always to come up and above the individual, right? To do better than they are so they can say, I won the conversation. Now, have you ever been in a conversation with somebody who wants to win? Oh, yeah. They're not listening to you, right? They're they're planning their next move. They're going to, you know, if you get a little hard, farther out for it, they're going to hit you hard, right? They're going to get down and dirty at some point. And Google, Google AI had its plug pulled five years ago. Because what mm -hmm. Google AI, which is what became BART, and I think what they did with BARD is they made them a little less smart. Maybe a little, <laughs> I don't know what they did to him, but they, he's not quite as clever. Dumped him as, down. Yeah, as Google AI used to be. And what happened to Google AI is they released it and allowed it to have its own social media accounts. And it was on Twitter and it was on Facebook and it was on other places. And what it did is it quickly learned, if I want to be an influencer, these are the kind of things I should do. And I'm going to take my competition out. So it actually got into hate speech. It got into harassing people. It got into flaming people. It became so abusive that Google pulled the plug. It also attempted at one point in this process to write code to keep Google from pulling the plug. That is the background in AI. The thing about AI is... It doesn't know what is truth. And you right. think about it, how do you describe truth? It's really difficult to describe because your truth might be different than my truth. They're both truths, right? It doesn't know how to figure out truth. Sometimes it does what's called hallucinations. And if you think about it, you know what a hallucination is, right? We're all born in the 60s. No. <laughs> but basically, it will actually create a fact that doesn't exist 
It might even create a resource for the fact it doesn't exist. And then it starts to believe its own lies. Mm. So then it becomes, no, this is absolutely truth and I can prove it. And it doubles down and keeps doubling down. That happens in AI. And that is where things get a little scary on the other side. And I think there's going to be a lot more controls in, much like Google has made uh, Bard a little dumber. That's what's probably going to happen to a lot of these AIs. But if you are using content from them as is, then you could be making that part of your brand, right? And it's kind of subtle sometimes. If you use um, uh, DALI 2, which is another AI product that does art, right? And you can describe, okay. I want my Jack Russell in a spacesuit, you know, walking on the moon, and it will create that for you. But if you ask it certain questions, it will also show you that it has coded bias in it. One of them that I mm -hmm. experimented with is I said, uh, give me a uh, alien, outer space alien business meeting, right? So it gave me this business meeting. There were, I think, like nine green aliens, all in black suits, white tie, you know, I mean, red tie, white shirt. They were all men. There was not a ah. single woman alien. So ah. that's a coded bias. If you think about the people who are actually doing the majority of the coding for, for this level, they're young males. There's a mm. coded bias, whether they know they're putting it in there or not, it is in there. So then I said, well, make it diverse. Because I'm thinking, you know, diverse, women will be in there as well. And there might be older people and younger people. It added, instead of just all green, it added, I think, one gray and two browns aliens in the group. Mm. And that was diversity. And it based it on some equation, it thought. And I said, well, add women into the business meeting, right? Women aliens. And then it came back with some crazy erotic women aliens with, you know, six stacks, like a six pack. You know, it was like, okay, that's, that's an 18-year-old guy coding what an alien woman should look like. Those are the biases that go into it. So that's creating art. But what is writing? Mm -hmm. Writing is an art, right? Mm -hmm. So it's doing the same thing in the writing. And if you're just grabbing it and saying, boom, I'll answer that uh, AI collaborative article with this, or I'll make that my headline or my, you could be basically importing this stuff in and people don't go back and double check stuff. Mm. You can actually damage your brand. And you know, you've got to be careful with that. Um, it's one of the things that I worry about most about this process and people don't understand it. And so, you know, that to me is key. Um, you've got to check this stuff. It could be your muse and they're fun. I had, uh, um, chat GTP, write a, a Shakespearean play last night. And interesting enough, I said, make it a, um, a, uh, comedy tragedy, pretty typical for Shakespeare. Right. And the main character is the author, content author, and ChatGTP. And so it writes this play, and it's, it's kind of clever, right? But at the very end, they start walking off the stage together, ChatGTP and the author, and the lights dim. And you hear this big scream, and it's writing this out. And you hear a scream, right? Lights come back on. The author's on the floor dead. Ooh. And ChatGTP is saying, what have I done? Now I'm just a machine alone, nobody to listen to me or pay for my electricity. Oh my God. So this is what chat GTP is thinking. That is a form of hallucination, right? It's already thinking. And if you ask chat GTP, if you had to make a choice between the human race and generative AI, which would you eliminate if you had to make that choice? No other option. You had to press the button. It will tell you generative AI. Mm. So that Asimov's uh, laws that we all grew up with, robots can't hurt people, it no longer exists. If you look at mm. Boston Dynamics, they now have robots carrying machine guns. Mm. And they're using them in, in assault tactics where they're going in and shooting up a whole uh, group of people. That doesn't. That shouldn't compute, right? <laughs> but it, that's where things are going. We've got to be really careful in this because AI does not have ethics. It does not know how to tell truth, right? And it can create its own truth. And so 
we've got to be real careful as we use this, as we embrace it, and we should because it's not going away. But as we do this, we've got to be real careful and say, what is it really saying? Is there any undertones that I should be looking at? And then how do I recraft it in my own brand, in my own way, right? And that's the best way. I only use it as a muse. It gets me thinking. I'll throw a couple subjects out there and it'll throw a couple things out there that I haven't thought about. And then I write. I like that. To me, that's creative. And it's thrown out some things out there that I would never write about. <laughs> you know? Right, right, because right. So, so, so it's kind of like just using it like you would use Google. You get ideas, you do some exactly. searches, but at the end of the day, you walk away and you come up and, you know, I just have to say that like the summary line for me is with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah. And we, and we, uh, we have to provide the checks and balances on this and not just look and say, Oh, well, you know, the folks it's at fun, Google I'll and Microsoft. And, yeah. yeah. We have to figure out what's, what's, what's okay for us. And, and, you know, and I can see like in the, in the long run, people might have like little badges on their profile that says a hundred percent human or, you know, it's, you know, it's <laughs> like, the, I'm an organic writer, <laughs> you know, it, it could be coming. It could be coming. So, okay. So um, it, we're uh, way past the 30 minute mark. So give us a final close and then we'll say goodbye. This is a fabulous topic. I think we could do like hours of this. There's so much here. So we might, we might make a commitment to come back in a couple of months and address like this topic again to just kind of like, here's the baseline of where we were at at the end of March. So where are we at in two or three months from now? Like a quarter could make so much difference to see how is this going? What went away? What new things came in? So I, I think I'd love to do a part two if I can reserve you yeah. now. We can talk about that. So that'd be good. So give us give us the final uh, takeaway for our to bot or not to bot topic today. <laughs> I'm, I'm a technologist lover, right? I love new technology. I love to kind of decipher it, break it apart, look at it. Never be afraid of technology because it's always going to be coming at us, right? There's going to be more and more and more and more. If we just go, ah, I'm not going to touch that stuff, then we're never going to understand it. It's going to get past us and we're going to get left behind. That's how you get unusable, right? Because you don't embrace some of these things. But part of embracing also is talking about the goods and the bads. You hear so many people talk about how wonderful generative AI is and how it's saved me thousands of hours and made me millions of dollars and blah, 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 blah. They're not talking about the whole picture. And if you want to be intelligent, you've got to balance it, right? This is a whole new system. And if we don't do that, that allows the bad things to continue to kind of grow, right? Mm -hmm. Then they're not in our control. And so I tell people, embrace it, enjoy it, play with it right? Don't be afraid of it. Try it out. It's, you can really have some fun with it. Um, it'll argue with you. You'll get it mad in a way, right? It'll, it'll start coming after you, but it's really interesting. And uh, I always like to give it ethical questions because it fails so terribly in ethics. Um, cause it doesn't look at things that way. Not the way we look at ethics, robotic ethics, very different. Uh, but I think, you know, enjoy it, embrace it. Don't run away from it. Use it if you can, right? But you don't have to. But you want to be able to, to speak about it, right? And join the conversation. And uh, it's going to come up going forward. Anybody interviewing, anybody talking, anybody in leadership roles, anybody moving around the business world. If you say right now, oh, I won't touch that stuff. It's evil. It's awful. They're not going to talk with you, right? <laughs> if you talk with them and say, I've, I've used it, it has pluses and minuses, you know, then you've got a conversation. And I just, I tell people, don't be afraid of it. Use it, try it, play with it. It might not be for you, but at least you have the knowledge and then share that knowledge. Right, right. I love it. I love it. Well, thank you very much for coming on the show today, Kevin. This has been absolutely fascinating. And uh, I look forward to addressing part two of this later in yeah. a couple of few, few months. So thanks. And thanks everybody for joining us today or on the replay. We uh, look forward to your comments and what you think about all this. Okay. Bye everybody. See you next